This is a continuation of 3.1. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do more difficult um, examples of graphing reciprocal functions. There's a couple of different things that we can do in order to get this really great picture of what an equation looks like. So we could include vertical asymptotes and any of their behaviors. We can include the horizontal asymptotes and their behaviors. And that gives us a fairly accurate graph already, but if you want to be even more perfect, um, you can actually figure out the x and y intercepts as well. Okay, so like I said, this gives you a really great uh, visual representation of what a reciprocal function will look like. Okay, so let's go through three examples. Um, this is our first example, and like I said, it's a continuation of the last video, so we're on example number two. And what we want to know is, well, what does this equation look like? Okay, so what we would start off with is um, anything to do with the domain and the range. And we already know this guy must have a vertical and horizontal asymptote. Those will restrict our domain and our range. So what I've highlighted down here is where to find the first restriction. This is going to be a restriction on the domain because we can't have a denominator of zero. So when we take the opposite of this number, which is a positive, and we do the opposite of the multiply two, so we divide by two, this is going to be our restriction on our domain. So x cannot be three over two or a half, well, sorry, one and a half, um, because if we put one and a half right in there, we're going to get a zero on the bottom. So this restriction gives way to our uh, vertical asymptote. We just don't write the cross through on the equal sign. So this is going to represent an actual vertical line. All right. Then what we're going to do is now that we have our vertical asymptote, we need to figure out its behavior. And then you know what, we can actually do the horizontal asymptote at the same time and figure out its behavior as well. You do all of that in a table. So I'm going to skip through and here's the table and the final graph. So as I go through the table, I'll show you how I graphed it. Okay, so these are our vertical asymptotes. You always want to check it from the right and from the left. And then you always put positive and negative infinity to check out your horizontal asymptote. Okay, so the vertical asymptote I did in red. I'm going to choose a number that's really close to one and a half, but from the right hand side. So 1.51 maybe. I'm going to take that number and I'm going to put it back into our equation right in the x. So negative 2 divided by 2 times 1.51 minus 3. And I'm going to figure out that answer. So whatever that answer is, um, I'm going to, I don't have to put the number in here, but it seemed to be really, really big, but in a negative um, direction. So negative infinity is what I would write. That means that if I were to graph that coordinate, 1.51 would have an extremely negative y value, meaning my graph is going to go down. I do the same thing for 1.5 from the left hand side. So maybe 1.49 is very close to 1.5 from the left hand side. So when I sub that into the equation, I got a very positive y value. Graphing this coordinate, it would be 1.49 and then like somewhere super duper high. So then the graph should be going upwards. All right, that's what you're going to have to do for your vertical um, asymptote and its behaviors. So how the graph is behaving around that asymptote. Then what you're going to do is you're going to figure out your horizontal asymptote. So I don't really know what it is yet. First, I have to actually calculate it. Take a positive number that's super big, so maybe 1,000. Put it into the equation where the x is. So what was it? Negative 2 over 2 times 1,000 minus 3 or... Yeah, something like that. And then you're going to get a number that is 0, 0.000 something, but it was a negative, and that's why I put below. So that means when my x value is positive 1,000, then my y value is going to be below the x-axis at negative 0, 0.00 whatever. Okay, but when I put negative 1,000 into the equation, so negative 1,000, I actually got um, a y value of positive zero, so positive 0, 0.00 something, which means my arrow in this direction is going to be on the top of the x-axis. Well, if this arrow's here and that arrow's there, that must mean that the horizontal asymptote is right there because they're approaching those, um, like that line. And so these two numbers are your horizontal asymptote, y equals to zero. That's this equation. 
All right, so this table actually helps you to find your vertical and horizontal asymptotes, and you already have a fairly accurate graph. I mean, what you just have to do is join your arrows, and then you have the shape of the graph. Now you could be even more accurate by finding the intercepts. So this intercept right here is determined like this. So I have my x-intercept and my y-intercept. The y-intercept is a lot easier to find. You're just going to sub in a 0 for your x. So there's a 0 down there. And then you're going to solve. So negative 2 over 0 minus 3, which is just this. And then the negatives go together and make a positive. That means we have an x value of 0 and a y value of 2 thirds. And like I said, that was this dot right here. Now we don't have an x intercept because if we put a 0 in for your y value and start solving for your x, we have to, because it's a divide, we're going to bring it to the other side and it becomes a multiply. And when I multiply it by 0, everything disappears, including my x. So how can you solve for anything? You don't have any more letters. Well, that means that you have no x-intercepts. That should actually make sense because, I mean, if you have an horizontal asymptote there, how can you have an x-intercept? So that should be like something that solidifies an idea in your mind. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Now, in example number three, we do have to graph this guy right here because what they're going to ask us this time is, tell me about the slopes. Where are they increasing and where are they decreasing? So this is a little bit of a different example. But we're actually going to have to go through the previous example steps just to be able to see what the graph looks like before we can answer this question. Okay, so our vertical asymptote can be found down here, negative 1 over 2. So x equals to negative 1 over 2. Don't forget to write this. You have to write the x equals 2. Those are going to go into my table, and I'm going to analyze it from the right and the left. So when I took a number that's to the right of this and subbed it into the equation where the x is, I got a positive um, number that was really big. And when I took a number from the left and subbed it into the equation, I got a negative number that was super big. What I did next was I figured out what the horizontal asymptote was by subbing in very large and very small numbers into the equation. So I got very close to 0 again. That means that my horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And since this one was a positive, this one was a negative, I went from above and below. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my graph. And I have something like this. So here is my vertical asymptote at negative a half. And then when it was coming from the right, it was a positive infinity. And then from the left was a negative infinity. So that's right there, check mark. Now your horizontal asymptote were these zeros. So here's your horizontal asymptote at zero. And then when you're going towards positive infinity, it was above. And then when it was going towards negative infinity, it was below. So there we go. We finished this part, check mark. Okay, like I said, if you want to do the intercepts, you can do the intercepts. But since this graph was just talking about um, slopes, I figured I just needed to know what the graph actually looked like. So I completed the middle part of the graph and just connected those um, arrows. And now I'm going to start answering the question. So where is um, the slope increasing and where is it decreasing? Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab some colors and start drawing some lines in. Okay. The slope right here for this part of the graph, I mean, that looks like a negative slope. But then this slope, if I draw another tangent line, is less negative. And notice that as I continue on through the graph, the curvature, sorry, the um, steepness of my lines are getting less and less. Okay, so this one is actually, um, when I say less, I mean less steep. So from a negative, a very negative steepness to a less negative steepness means it's increasing. So a left secant towards a right secant. I drew tangents. You can draw secants. It's not a big deal. It's the same thing. All right. Now, if I do this side, it's actually decreasing in slope because, again, let me get my um, colors. All right. If I draw from the left towards the right, I'm going to draw. OK, and you know what? This time I'll draw secants. So here's a secant not a tangent. And again, it's negative. But then notice that as I go farther right, it becomes more and more steep. 
So more steep in a negative direction means a decreasing slope because it's getting more negative. I know that's it's really hard to kind of wrap your mind around, um, but you could calculate the slopes. I mean, maybe this slope is negative 10, but this one is negative 20, and this one is negative 50. So do you see how it's getting more and more negative? That means it's decreasing in slope. Okay, so what I wrote here is it's increasing in slope from um, negative one half all the way to positive infinity, but it's decreasing in slope from negative infinity all the way to an x value of negative one half, not including those numbers because there is no x value at negative one half. The very last example is example number four. So when we have an equation, what we want to do is create the equation based on pieces of information they gave us. So if they already gave us a vertical asymptote of two over three, we know that those two pieces will go into our bottom. So if it's a positive two, that means we write a negative two right here. The three being divided will now become a three times. Okay, now they've also given us this extra piece of information, which is our y-intercept, 0, 1. I'm going to put that 0 into my x and the 1 into my y, and I'll solve for that last number. Okay, so 3 times 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2. And let's bring that negative 2 to the other side by doing the opposite, which is a multiply. So multiply negative 2 means that a is negative 2. So our final equation that represents all of this information is negative 2 over 3x minus 2. Okay, so those are more complicated types of examples um, that, let's be honest, would have made the last video really, really long. So um, I hope that that gives you a good idea of um, the beginnings of rational functions.